Hi, I'm Paolo Di Tommaso. I'm going to present my experience in the deployment of portable container for data analysis pipeline using Nextflow. So a few words about me. I'm a research software engineer. I work many years at the Center for Genome Regulation in Barcelona, Spain. I'm an underlying engineer of the Nextflow project. Also, more recently, I co-founded Secure Labs, that is a company focused on this technology. The most common use case in which Nextflow is applied is related to genomic workflows. These are basically data analysis applications that need to extract information from a large genomic data set. This is why, uh, commonly, uh, for this kind of application, it is used in a embracing prioritization model that just spawn the execution of uh, hundreds or hundreds of thousands, if not more, jobs over uh, a distributed cluster so that um, developers can easily uh, analyze larger data set, just replicating the same job over and over again. And this is one, one need that we have in this application, how to manage a synchronize all these jobs in an efficient manner, how to define all these jobs in an efficient manner. Another problem is how to uh, create this application in an easy way so that developers can, 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 can easily prototype complex parallel applications without having to spend to enter into low-level uh, details. You also have to make this application replicable in an easy way so that we can move and deploy the execution in different execution contexts without having to implement the, 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 the data analysis from, from scratch. Um, just to, to show maybe a, a typical bioinformatics task can be something like this. So this is just a, a Linux, uh, Linux snippet in which you compose, chain together many different tools. There can be specific bioinformatics tools or maybe just uh, common Linux tools, Linux uh, commands. And this is a very easy and efficient way that uh, pipeline developers use to define a task into a pipeline. The problem is that the pipeline can be much complex, much big, bigger. And just to give you an idea, this is the, the, the flowchart of the companion parasite genome and addition pipeline, which each of these circles might be implemented in how I will show you before. So the problem is, is that how we keep all these together, how we define dependency between the task, how we parallelize the execution so that we can uh, speed up the execution of the pipeline. And uh, the other big problem is also how to make this replicable. The meaning that imagine when you have to deploy this pipeline in a target cluster or in a cloud environment, you have to install all the pieces of software that made up this pipeline. So here there could be something like 50 different uh, pieces of tools that need to be uh, maybe store, compile, and deploy the in the target environment. If you don't have a proper uh, way to manage the situation, it's a true nightmare. So here it comes next flow, and it is a, um, a way to, uh, to keep together all these different aspects that we may have in, um, when we need to, to implement and deploy a computational workflow uh, that I was describing you. Uh, next, we'll provide a, <coughs> a DSL, domain-specific language, to simplify the implementation of recurrent task into a data analysis pipeline. So, in a declarative manner, so the, the pipeline developer can focus just on the main logic pipeline without having to spend too, too much time in low-level implementation details. And above all, it provides also high-level uh, abstraction for the definition, the prioritization, the pipeline using the data flow programming model. That this greatly simplify the definition of parallel task and the execution of this task when you are going to deploy the, this application. And also, what is very important that provide a built-in support for containers so that the pipeline developer, the pipeline also user, can abstract all the dependencies each task using containers. And this is a, 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 a great way to, to make this, this analysis easily replicable in different execution contexts. Not only, Nextflow also provides the ability to deploy in the execution of this pipeline in different 
uh, different platform. They can be maybe a single computer, a laptop for the development, or a batch scheduler that can be Solar, PBS, any of the most uh, com common use batch color, but even cloud cloud platform. Along with this, provide also the ability to track the changes in your code and your dependencies using a uh, common source code management system like GitHub, Bitbucket, etc. And this an open source piece of software. So containerization. Containers are key feature to enable stable and replicable data analysis pipeline execution across uh, different deployment platforms. And let's see how Nextflow uses container for this purpose. The idea is that when you want to run, when you deploy the execution pipeline script, Nextflow, the Nextflow runtime will spawn the execution by a different job that would be executed by the underlying scheduler. But uh, doing that, what Nextflow is doing is wrapping the execution each job in some container. And this allows us to, to do what? To isolate the job environment uh, by the underlying execution platform. So now, thanks to the container, the job does not depend anymore by the configuration the tools available in the HPC cluster, but the pipeline developer can ship along with, with its pipeline also all the binary dependencies that are wrapped by the container. This makes it very easy to distribute a self-contained data analysis pipeline with the code and all the binary dependencies. Nextflow was one of the first workflow managers to have the built-in support for Docker containers, but um, now we know that container does not mean any, any more just Docker. We, there are many different uh, container runtimes, and the interesting fact that Nextflow has the built-in support for all the major container runtimes, that is Docker, Singularity, and Podman. And this is very important because it allows the pipeline developer and the pipeline user to be able to switch from one runtime to another just with few configuration settings in the next flow in the pipeline configuration file. Portability. This is another important feature because it allows us to deploy the same pipeline application many different execution platform without having to implement uh, our code. So when you run Nextflow script, by default, Nextflow will launch the pipeline jobs into the local computer, just spawning Linux processes and eventually using uh, the Docker container if you have specified to do, to do so. And this is very good for prototyping or developing the pipeline, maybe just using your laptop. But then when you need to, to scale to deploy the execution with using uh, production data, quite surely you will need to use uh, a batch scheduler. And to do that, what you need to do is to add to your pipeline script a small configuration file in which you define <coughs> the, the, the feature, the requirement for the execution of this pipeline. Uh, for example, you may, uh, you may you can specify that you want to use LARM by scheduler, define that the executor of the pipeline is LARM, and then you can specify the, uh, the resource requirement that can be the queue, the memory, the CPU, and eventually also the container that need to be used to run this pipeline. In this case, we'll use a singularity, singularity container. And in the same way, you can even deploy the execution of this pipeline in a completely different compute service. That could be a, a cloud uh, scheduler. For example, just changing the, the executor definition from SLAR to AWS batch, Nextflow is able to deploy the execution of this pipeline to the AWS batch uh, computing service, remapping all the resource requirement to the to, to the equivalent resource requirement API calls for to launch the execution of this pipeline into the, the batch computing service. So this is very useful because avoid the, the lock-in of your pipeline and allows you to deploy this code in many different execution platforms. Local computer for uh, prototyping and development, uh, local batch scheduler, or maybe even cloud batch scheduler. Nextflow has a built-in support for all the major 
batch scheduler that is Largo Engine, IBM LSA, PBS Work, HTTP Condor, even more. Uh, there is also support for uh, cloud native uh, cluster like Kubernetes, and uh, it has also support for uh, built in cloud technology like uh, AWS uh, Web Services and Google Cloud. And then also, we already talked about container runtimes. And another interesting uh, evolution to this project is the Nexo Tower, that is instead a um, web application front end for the managing, the monitoring, and the execution of the Nexo pipeline using a, a nice uh, web front end. Okay, mm, this is, uh, we don't have much time to discuss about this, but it is nice to know that we have also, Nexo is not just a command line tool, it's not just a, a runtime, but there is also a nice uh, visual front end that allows us to, to deploy the execution, to monitor the execution of this pipeline uh, using the same principle and mode. And finally, I'd like to mention that Nextflow flow started like a small academic project, but nowadays a uh, quite uh, strong user base and community that is continuously growing. Uh, it is used every day both in academic organization and industry for real world uh, production pipelines. So in conclusion, Nextflow enables single action deployment of complete data analysis pipelines. And the most interesting part that they eat it integrates transparently with the original system, hiding low-level implementation details, enable portability of the resulting data analysis. And also, it's important that allows the pipeline developers to focus on the bioinformatics logic or the application logic, not just bioinformatics, and make the deployment self-contained. That is a very important aspect for this kind of application. So, thank you for your attention. If you're interested in more to learn more about this project, here there are a few links. And thanks again.